Hello and welcome back to this episode of Shooting and Country TV. In a previous episode, you saw, you, you saw me, got my tongue tied, lips on today. <clears throat> you saw me use a young tackle, a young puppy that's as it happens, my house puppy called Frank. And what I did was I used Frank to show how we begin basic training for dogs. And I'm using the term dogs. It's not just for gun dogs. This video is specifically about gun dogs. But for any puppy, we use a very, very similar um, uh, way or, or, or method of training our dogs um, through basic obedience. So uh, we looked at the various tools and, and things we can use to aid us. If you remember, we use food, probably top of the list. We use a lot of food. We're very much about reward uh, through food. Reward-based training is what all dog training really is, hangs its hat on these days. So we're rewarding through food. We're also using the place board. You remember this big green box? This um, place board is the target. It's called target training. We're using the combination of food and the place board, i.e. the puppy needs to learn and he'll learn it within a week is if you see mum or dad put this board on the floor and you get your little bottom up on it and you sit and you look up and you're quiet and you don't bark and you keep all four paws on the floor, you'll get a piece of food for doing that. From the very beginnings of what we call target training using the place board, we can start to engineer all of the other behaviors. So we can engineer come, we can engineer sit, we can engineer uh, focus, you can call it watch me. Different people like to apply different command words to some of these, watch me, focus, whatever word you want. So the dog just learns to look at you and stare at your face. Remember, we didn't really emphasize it that much last time. To be honest, my hands were really busy with Frankie. He was all over the place. It was kind of fun to do it. Um, I'm wanting the dog to focus on my face. If a dog or a person is going to work with you, they need to focus on your face. Human beings, most of the action, most of our expression comes from our face and our hands and our body language, but your face is really telling the picture. So that food treat is coming up. When I take a piece of food, I'm offering it to the dog, then I'm bringing it up and I'm bringing it up here just under my chin, not on front of my face particularly as your dog gets bigger. The reason why you wouldn't do that is because if you brought it up here and the dog gets excited and jumps up, there's a risk he will catch you either with his teeth or possibly his feet. So if we have the uh, food positioned just under our chin here, the dog has to look up to us to see and make eye contact. That's all really important. So that's what we were kind of talking about last time. When we talked about it last time, we talked about that basic equipment, the food, the place board. Um, we talked about the use of a lead, whether you use a clip lead on a collar or a slip lead. In this case, we like slip leads. We talked about these toys and the reasons why we use them because they're tiny for a small dog. Uh, they haven't got much of a flap on. And um, what we're going to do this time is we're going to look at how we develop the retrieving element. Do you remember the retrieve last time? The retrieve was really fun last time because I kind of got this little toy and I waggled it and I gave it to Frank and he kind of picked it up and he just ran off, which is what you'd expect a lot of puppies to do. Not all. And it's what we call possession. They want to own this toy. And why wouldn't they? They wouldn't want to give it up. Remember, the retrieve is about getting a young dog or an adult dog to surrender its prize. It's a really important element of dog training, which is why I love the retrieve for all breeds. In my opinion, if a dog is willing to run out, pick up its prize and wantingly come back to you and go, here you go, mum, here you go, dad, you can have this prize. And are you pleased with me? You've really got a really good relationship going with that dog. It's not about forcing a dog to do it. It's about it wanting to bring it back to you for a reward, affection, uh, and, and just that you're pleased with him. So it's a really important thing. So as we carry on with our the development of our um, uh, retrieving games, remember the puppy's growing quite quickly. It's one of the things people aren't that ready for, but a young gun dog puppy will grow really quickly. So the toys, the dummies, can grow with it. So puppy dummies, tiny ones without too many flaps on it. What I've got here is a couple of kind of intermediate dummies that are what we would call, that would be what we call a standard gun dog dummy. It's, it's a canvas bag of sand or sawdust. Um, it's, it, this one's a particularly lightweight one. It's not a heavy one because we're still with a young dog. It's got a toggle on it so we can really wang it a long way. Um, all of these things are things we're moving towards. In this video, we're gonna see and show you how we take Frank from where, he, well, not Frank, I apologize. We're gonna to move to grown up gun dogs now. You'll be really pleased that we're gonna use proper gun dogs. We're gonna use a young cocker uh, uh, spaniel called um, Nancy. And we're gonna show you how we start to de develop, still using the place board at this retrieve from tiny upwards 
uh, until we move it into a kind of a formal, more formal retrieve. This bigger dummy requires a bigger mouth, it's heavier. Your dog won't just be able to carry heavy things. He needs to develop the, the power in his jaw uh, and uh, the ability in his neck to lift bigger weights. So it's really important we don't give a dog a dummy that's too heavy for him, otherwise it will make life difficult. Well, we're just on that subject. We talked about, I gave Frank a puppy toy while well, he's still tiny. It's important you're aware that at, at that point in the dog's st stage of life, he still has tiny weeny puppy teeth and they start to fall out. He needs to chew, they can become unpleasant for him. So be careful with your retrieving. Be careful with your retrieving or maybe don't do any retrieving at all at that early, early stage while their teeth are transitioning because you could have a puppy that ends up with an association with pain every time he picks up a toy, which would put him off because if every time he picks up the toy, his little teeth hurt because they're hanging out, he thinks, oh, nasty, I don't want to pick things up. And that is really important. As we said, gun dogs, we want them to have a retrieve. So um, uh, be careful with a youngster like that. It also, if we delay the period before we bring our puppy into proper retrieving, by the time they get to having shed all their teeth, they, you will have established a really strong connection with these place boards. The dog um, will be wanting to be on there. He, he will get on there really quick. He'll be wanting to come back. And I promise you, if you do the place board work, the target training work, correctly the very first time you throw a toy for him he'll go out and pick it up and he'll be so conditioned he'll just come back and sit on this board because that's what he's been doing which is why the target training in the board has so many positive spins on it and I keep referring to the place board because we throw a lot of weight behind using them. So guys, there are different dummies there. Um, there's a white one. And so as we develop things and we go outside, obviously this is much more visual. It's a little bit further forward than perhaps we uh, are gonna um, uh, be using today in terms of development. But nevertheless, it just shows you the contrast of how we can use a brightly colored, uh, there's a blue dummy here, but this white one will contrast against most backgrounds. So a very quick uh, run over of what we've got. We've still got the puppy dummies. We can still use those. Uh, we've got this round dummy that comes in. They're brilliant for really, you can get a lot of distance. Distance isn't something that necessarily we want to be doing with a young dog at this stage, but we're just starting to show you how um, Sporting Saint have gone to enormous length to develop all of the different types of dummies with these lovely patterns on shapes, weights, textures. Um, we talk about texture. Remember we referred to the rabbit ball last time and said how this will be a really high value toy for most dogs. It rolls and it's fluffy. Um, you can make it smell nice. You can put all kinds of scent on there to make it smell really nice. So thank you again to Sporting Saint for, for the pr provision of all these lovely dummies. Um, so guys, that's the kit we're gonna be using today. What we're gonna do now is we're gonna go uh, outside. It's raining, it's absolutely disgusting out there today. Um, but what we're gonna do, we're gonna go into our barn for two reasons. One, because it's raining and I don't wanna get wet. Um, and two, because as it happens, the transitional retrieving, we want to think about what we call classroom choice. Do you remember in the first video, we, uh, the first episode, we did everything in here with Frank, and that was for good reason. It was done in my kitchen because we can minimize the distractions. There are enough distractions in here. When you go outside, most dogs are really distracted. I don't want them to be too distracted. I want them to be focused on me. So by using the right classroom, if you go out in the middle of a pheasant pen and expect your six month old puppy to retrieve these, you're probably gonna be unsuccessful. We're gonna make a transition from indoors to we're very lucky we have a training facility where we have what we call our barn and we go in we're going to go in our barn which has a hard floor it has distractions in it but it has much fewer distractions it's going to be easier to train the dog lots of things to think about classroom choice food management dummies um place boards there's a whole raft of exciting things for us to think about to learn about and you really need to learn about this stuff before you put your hands on your dog. Otherwise you'll mess it up and you'll mess your dog up. So um, uh, look forward to seeing you in a minute. We're gonna make our way to the barn uh, where we'll show you a young cocker called Nancy and we'll start to develop uh, the rest of the retrieving skills. So we're here inside our indoor training barn. Uh, the weather outside is filthy. However, that's not the reason we're in here. We're in here uh, because of uh, the classroom choice, my classroom choice. I've chosen to bring this young Cocker Spaniel, Nancy, into this uh, training barn because the distractions in this barn are less than outside. In the background, you can probably hear uh, the shooting school. We happen to be located on, on the shooting school and um, 
the shooting school is banging away all day. There's, there's shotguns being fired, which is kind of good um, for background noise because our dogs get used to it really quickly. That's a whole other video to talk about introduction to shot. So what we're going to do now, we showed you the equipment. We've got some slightly different place boards. These ones here, they're made out of old pallets. You know, you don't have to have posh ones, although Sporting Saint makes some really great um, uh, 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 place boards that you saw us using earlier with, uh, with the uh, grass and everything on them, the simulated grass. So we're using these as targets. We've got two here. And what I'm going to do now is just show you the ongoing development before we start the retrieving. No, it's sit before we start the development of the retrieve. If you remember, uh, I said that we really want to get the dog targeting. I want the dog targeting. If you watch what happens when I take the lead off and move into the vicinity of the boards, you'll see Nancy pop herself up on the board. And that's because she's now target trained. If you could interview Nancy, if you were to hold her microphone uh, in front of her face right now and say, hey Nancy, why are you sat on that, that funny board? She would say, it's really simple. If you go and sit on that board, uh, my dad or my trainer will come along and they will stand in front of you. And as long as you're quiet and as long as you don't bark and as long as you don't jump up and as long as you keep still. And remember this thing about focusing. If you keep focused on the boss, I say the boss, the trainer, they'll pay you food. Okay, it's that simple. So we've got the dog target trained. You'll see if I just indicate here, she'll come to this target and sit and wait patiently for food. Nancy. So you can see now uh, I'm able to use my fingers, my hands, my body language to start directing the dog. So we're starting to work together. We're starting to school her to do give, offer certain behaviors in return for a food tree. While we're on the subject, guys, we talked about using a slip lead before. It's important that we know how to use a slip lead. Slip lead just works like this. It's not designed to strangle the dog like some misguided people think. What it's designed to do is just work with the dog. What we want is a loop that's big enough to slide uh, over the dog's head. And then we just adjust. There's a tiny little thing on here called a keeper. This one's beautiful. This one uh, supplied to us by Sporting Saint. It's got a little press button keeper and we can slide it up, not to make it tight but just to fit it so it doesn't slide over the dog's head and we don't lose it so um, just to remind you pop it on there is a right and a wrong way to sit this uh, what we want is that keeper pulled up there and then when the dog sat alongside me if I put it on correctly I've got that lovely U position can you see it's loose we don't want to see tight leads tight leads means your dogs are being trained badly that's your fault not the dog so uh, make sure you fit your lovely sporting saint lead on properly okay um, uh, so what we're going to do now is just revisit the things we started to show you in episode one with Frank. We're still using food treats. This part of the training is entirely, absolutely entirely about food rewards, okay? And an element of affection for me. Don't do what I just did and drop food on the floor because otherwise your dog starts to look on the floor for food. We want our dogs to look up. They want, I want them to think all the food that they're ever gonna get is gonna come from us. So if we look at, um, remember we've got this little dog. If you see now, she's quite happy to sit and stay. Uh, she's learned that if she stays there, I'll come back to her. Now, when we're, when we're developing the sit stay, the sit wait, or in my case, I just call it the sit. I don't call it anything else. I just say sit and the dog stays where it is. We always come back to our dog if we leave them so that in, in their mind, if I say sit and walk away, it's not to follow me. I don't keep recalling them from a sit. I just want them to sit. However, periodically, let's say one in 10 with a puppy that's learning this, using my whistle, and we haven't really covered whistles much, we're gonna do a really quick um, uh, overview of what we need. A recall whistle is a series of pips. In my case, means come and means sit. That's the only two we need for now. So if you watch what happens if I stand behind the board here, I offer Nancy a food treat. And you see I'm combining the use of both of those whistles. Now she's jumping up, which I don't like. So I just pull my hands away. I just don't reward her. I want her to come into what we call the heel position or the finish. I put food on her nose. I step back, I bring her around and there she is sat in the heel position. She is stepping up quite slightly high and that's because of my hand position. I need to remember that I'm working with a little tiny dog, a small dog, so my hand needs to be down there. If I hold my hand up here, she'll come up and heel, heel and sit. I need to reload really quickly. I've got my food treats in my right pocket. I reload really quickly, not spilling them all over the floor. I put another food piece treat on her nose and I can manipulate her round and start to teach her the basics of heel work. So we're using two place boards now, as you've seen. 
to. And I can just say by association, heal, and get her to come to the board. Now, see what's happening. As soon as we get near the board, which is a good and a bad thing, watch what she does. She leaves my side and goes to the place board. As we move forward, we need to change that. We'll need to bring her out much wider and get her to stay with us rather than immediately going to the board. So if I go, Nancy, sit. So that she's also learning to sit away from the place board. Place, and then she can sit there. So. Just to finalize this little bit, guys, we're developing come, sit, uh, watch, stay, if you want to call it that, sit and wait, stay where you are. We're using the recall whistle. Let's just recap on that one more time. The stop whistle, sit, rather than say sit. Finish. And that's what we want out of this place board. You'll see Nancy's targeting these properly now. She's also learned, and this is important, that if she gets off, there is no reward, which is why. Did you see her there? She went to move because I made a funny movement with my hand. I gesticulated and she thought I meant go this way. She realized I hadn't told her that, so she corrected herself and sat back up and went, oh no, I'm not to get off this board until he asked me to. Nancy, come. So as much as we're using whistles, you can also overlay all of your vocal commands, come sit, Watch if you choose to. So now we've got a dog that's targeting. Now we've got a dog that's targeting the boards. It's going there of its own volition. It's taking itself to the board. Now we can start the um, retrieving. Remember the fun and games I had with Frankie where he was all over the place in the kitchen, gave him a dummy, he just ran off with it. I nearly used a rude word then. He ran off with it, yeah? Um, and so what we need to do with Frankie is continue to build this till we get him to a level that Nancy's at. And then I almost guarantee you that in future when we throw the board, Frankie will pick up the toy and come running back. So in a second, uh, the lady I work with who helps me to train the dogs, Vicky, she's gonna show you how we develop the puppy retrieve using the place boards. You can see I'm joined by Vicky, my training assistant. Uh, the lady helps me train the dogs. Uh, Vicky's still got Nancy with her. And we're gonna look at the puppy retrieve, the beginnings of the puppy retrieve. We're saying, get down with the dog. You see, Vicky sat on the bottom. You see, the place boards are still there. We've joined two together, one so that Vicky can sit on it and one so that Nancy can, has room to get up. L L Vicky sat with her feet slightly apart, so she's welcoming the puppy. And all she's going to do in a second is take this little puppy dummy. She's gonna waggle it about in front of Nancy's face, get her focus. As soon as she's focused on it, she's gonna pop it out in front of her and hopefully Nancy will run out and come back to you. Why would the puppy come back to you? Well, it's because you're sat on the floor. It's the attraction of coming back. What we're trying not to do, do you remember Frank, the little tackle, once he got a dummy in his mouth, he became possessive of it. He didn't want me to have it. He wanted to keep it for himself, understandably. What we want to do is persuade the young dog that if it brings it back to us, not only does it get affection, sometimes we offer it food. Well, there's a whole nother video about using food and retrieving because it can get complicated. If you mix up the two, sometimes dogs will rush back to you for the food rather than the dummy. So we need to be careful with that one. Um, but if you've got a really high drive gun dog from good stock, you probably won't need to use food at all. All we want Nancy to understand is if she comes straight back to Vicky, she'll get a little cuddle. Vicky will take the dummy off her. She'll then turn her around and throw it again. So the dog figures out, it's this simple. Take the dummy back to mum, I get a cuddle, and I get to play this game all over again. It's just this repetition. So let's give this dummy to Vicky and Nancy and see what happens. So there's a little bit of confusion there where the dog chose to come back to me. We see she's having fun with Vicky. So all Vicky's gonna do, so this is all about fun. This isn't about control. I say it's not about control. Vicky's actually hanging on to Nancy and keeping her there. If you want to set her up again and repeat that exercise, Vicky, I've stood behind Vicky in the hope that she'll come straight to her and not. Look at the way Vicky's holding the dog, just restraining it momentarily. And as soon as the dummy goes out, Nancy wants to come to me but she's gone back to Vicky now, more fuss, more affection, and we're starting to build the beginnings of what we call a play retrieve. Now, Nancy is clearly a slightly older dog. She's not a tiny puppy, guys. You can start this exercise, this puppy exercise, probably from um, you know, about 12 weeks of age. If you think about the time frame, if you've been doing four weeks place board training from eight weeks to 12 weeks, by the time the puppy is 12 weeks old, it will be really targeting the board. And in targeting the board, we can then start to um, 
uh, use. Both Vicky is the target. Vicky's the target. The board's the target as well. See how Vicky tapped her hands on the board there to encourage Nancy to come back to her. So that's a puppy retrieve. It's a bit of a quick overview, but that's how we start our youngsters going. So they're volunteering to go out and come straight back for affection and the fact that they get to get the toy thrown for them again. And as you can see, the reason why you wouldn't want a spaniel is because they're nuts, but they're great fun. As we progress through retriever training, we go from the real puppy kind of retrieve and we start to formalize things. Alongside of the retrieving, don't forget, we're doing all this kind of formal basic training, the come, the sit, um, the watch me, come, finish, sit, sit. You can say stay or wait if you wish to add that word in. I choose not to. Um, remember, we're using the place board. The place board gives um, Nancy a, a perimeter, for want of a better word, to work to. So as we raise those stakes, if you remember at the start of the episode, we talked about the different dummies. You saw Vicky using one of these puppy dummies for Nancy. We slowly but surely want to move her up through until she's maybe using this um, traditional two pound dummy, which is a big dummy for a little dog. It takes a while for them to develop, to develop the jaw strength uh, and the neck strength. So uh, what we're going to do first is look about how we, t we move from, do you remember Vicky was sat with the puppy between her, her, her legs? She was holding onto it. She was pitching the, the dummy out. No restraint whatsoever, just letting the dog go. We want to get to have the freedom to chase, to pick up and bring back to you. You then make a fuss and repeat the exercise a couple of times before you finish the game and swap it out for maybe a, a chew so the dog doesn't feel hard done by. We've now got Nancy to a stage where she will work for both food and dummies. She's, she's excited by both. And, and again, I can't emphasize, we haven't really talked about breeding. That's a whole nother video. Again, I keep referring to this. So much to learn about gun dogs. But the truth is, well, there's no way we can capture it all in one video. Um, hence, you need to watch all the other episodes. Um, but uh, we are combining with this dog the use of food and dummies. And I can do that because I've made sure that she's always wanting food. I manage her food so she's sleek and fit and slightly hungry, but not starving. I don't want her to be in a poor condition. I need to maintain that using the excellent Chudley's dog food that we, we use all the time here. Um, uh, but also I need to maintain that interest in dummies. When you go into good gun dog stock like this that comes from high drive, um, uh, 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 breeding, you will have a dog that will interact and will interchange between food treats one second and then a dummy if you do it properly. So let's look at how we move things on. So what I'm going to do is bring Nancy into my side. If you remember before, she was retrieving from between Vicky's legs. Now we've got her sat in what I would call the heel position from the point at which we would normally line a dog up and start to send it out. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to ask something a bit different of Nancy this time. Last time, as soon as we threw the toy, the, dumb, the, the dummy, the dog went straight out and picked it up. Now I'm going to ask her for a little bit of self-restraint. So now I'm going to emphasize the sit, sit. And all I'm going to do is carefully just put that dummy on the floor behind me. You see, my body language is saying, stay where you are. What I like to do is pick the dummy up and take it back to the dog. And she can have a hold of it. Nancy likes dummies so much that just to hold is like a feed treat for her. From when we were filming with Vicky, I've still got two place boards joined together and the two place boards oh, mean that she can move around a bit more than I want her to. So I'm just gonna push one out of the way and we're just gonna focus on the one, one place board because that gives us location and keeps her where we want her to be. So once we've got a dog, that will sit and wait while we drop a dummy. We can open the gate, we can pick it up, we can take it back and we can reward Nancy with it. Uh, sometimes I come back and I just give the dog a feed treat. So I simply come back to here and give her a feed treat. Uh, either way, she's getting rewarded for what she's doing. There's that finish. What we want in due course is that I'm able to pitch a dummy from here. You can see, so in her excitement then, bear in mind she's done this before, you know, we're cheating slightly, we're using, hey, so I just gave her a tap there, because on the chair is all the exciting dummies. And on that chair is a dummy, the rabbit ball, that is slightly higher value. So she's got to go and pick that dummy. So now we've got a dog that's sitting and waiting. We built it up, as I've just shown you. Now I want to align her. So I'm starting to bring in this hand. Whilst the dog, you see, the dog is focused on the dummy, not the hand. So while she does that, I won't send her. Now I'll say fetch or back. 
she'll go out there, I'll tap the board, uh, 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 Nancy. Now, that's an interesting one. Professional fault. What I've done, remember I talked to you about distractions. I've, for the purpose of the video, shown you all these lovely dummies from Sporting Saint. Stupidly, I've left them on a chair right next to where I want her to retrieve. So, understandably, because I know that what she's really after is this rabbit ball, because, hey, Nancy knew, come on, Nancy. Because this rabbit ball is of higher value than this, on her way back, she had a little look round. So before I know it, I'm creating faults. So like a good trainer, I'm gonna pick up this chair. I'm gonna move it away, move it out of temptation, I hope, sit, just remind Nancy what I want from her. Um, I'm gonna come back and repeat that exercise because finish, I want her to do what I asked her to do properly. I want her to go straight out and straight back. So she's still going out there, isn't she? So I'm gonna to have to work, I'm gonna to have to work, sit. I'm gonna to have to work a little bit harder. So this time, sit, 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 back. Now I'm gonna tap the board here. So she's going round. So these are all things, she's jumping up. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna wait and see what she wants to do. At the moment she wants to jump up, there. Dead, good, I step away. So. By waiting, she gave me the behavior I, I wanted because what the behavior we wanted, don't forget, is that she comes on, sits up and presents. Now at the moment, she's whizzing around me, she's running around, she's jumping up and down all over the place. I need to change that retrieve. So let's see if we can get it right. Sit, sit. <laughs> okay, now you're kind of seeing really raw gun dog training, guys. No, so I step up, I'm waiting for her to present. No. So you see, she's just rolling that dummy and if I, dead, finish, there. So you're seeing raw gun dog training. I'm making some mistakes, guys, which is kind of good. It's not good. I don't like to make mistakes on cameras, but I do make mistakes. So I need to make it clearer to her that she's not to run in because we've been allowing her to run in in the earlier stages. So I'm gonna make it double clear that I don't want her to move. Nancy, sit, sit, sit. Now I bring my hand down when she's staring at the dummy back. Out she goes, tap the board, in she comes. I'm not going to do anything, I'm not going to tell her off, I'm going to say I'm not taking that dummy. Nope. So again she's chucking it at me, so I've got to be really careful with this. Nance, come on. Come on puppy. I'll take that one. So sometimes you have to take it. Now this leads us nicely and quickly guys into something that you may choose to do, uh, and there's no way we can cover it today. There's a form of um, retriever training, retrieve training, whether you use it with spaniels or guard dogs or um, retrievers, that's, that's called um, the trained retrieve. It's where we back chain. So basically we teach a dog to sit and hold a dummy and we get it really holding it and, before, and then slowly but surely we get it to pick it up and bring it to us. It's back chaining, it's kind of reversing what you do. Oh, it's a huge video, it's a long video, far more time needed to dedicate to it than we, we do, we've got today. But I would like to get her retrieving better. I know if I swap dummies and I go for this rabbit ball, I'm gonna get a different kind of retrieve. Sit. It rolls, I've gotta be very careful, clearly for the purpose of the camera, see how much interest she's got. Um, this is the steadiness training. Hey, sit. Just to remind her, a little tap with my hand. Back. Let's see what she does this time. In she comes to the board, come on. Sit. No, sit. So she's just wiggling her head about. You see, she's not willing to really offer that to me. You can see how much work we've got to do. All of these problems that I'm having with Nancy at the moment are things that I want to groom out. Long term, I want her to come straight in, boom, sit up and deliver to hand. We'll show you a, 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 a trained dog later on in, in, this, in the session. So guys, we're using different value toys. This is really valuable. Nancy would hang on to that all day. Um, uh, she likes it. It's slightly harder to get out of her mouth. The big dummy is what we want her to move to. We need to, to, to develop in her ability to carry, carry different shaped objects, heavier objects, um, different textures as we move forward. Right now, my main focus is that I've got a dog that when I throw a dummy, it sits and waits, that when I point at the dummy and say back or fetch, whichever you choose, or get out, it doesn't matter what word you choose as long as it's 
one that your dog understands, that the dog will go straight out and come straight back to me and willingly deliver. There's a little bit of what I call possession, a little bit of fun, a little bit of excitement. It's not a big deal. I know I can groom it out uh, and, and school it out of her, but I need to do some more place board work. I need her to come straight back to this board, okay? So you saw earlier, when there's no toy involved, she goes straight to the board. Right now, she's wanting just to go round me and have a little bit of a fiddle about. So there it is, the beginnings of a retriever training. Loads to think about, guys. Study, 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 watch videos and watch the episodes that we keep producing on Shooting and Country TV. I hope you've liked what you've seen today. As I said, we're trying to give you raw footage. I would prefer that everything went perfect. But most people who watch any of our videos say, hey, that was a really good one, Howard, because we kind of saw you working with a dog that's not always perfect. Nobody's dog is ever perfect. Even the top trainers in the world don't have perfect dogs. They have to school them to make them like that. So do keep watching the episodes. A huge thank you once again to Chudley's to, um, and Sporting Saint. Thanks to the wonderful insurance company, the Insurance Emporium Company, that um, have allowed us to develop these videos and, and bring these to Shooting and Country TV. Um, I really hope you like the episode. Uh, don't forget to like and share and look forward to seeing you in future episodes. So Howard Kirby from Mullins Coat Dog Training Centre. Um, whether you have one dog or multiple dogs like myself, um, insurance for veterinary care is really, really important. So whether you have one dog or multiple dogs and pets. Insurance is really important. There are some great insurance companies out there. My personal choice is the Insurance Emporium.